Micro stuttering can be one of the most annoying things on a PC. You can run a game, run any app, even simply loading Windows, but sometimes you can just feel it. But can you do something about it? In this video, I'll go through different ways to counter micro stuttering. It could mitigate or even fix the problem. Unlike several years ago where solutions were much easier to identify and resolve, micro stuttering can be one of the most complicated things to tackle. Before you do anything, take a system restore backup first. Simply go to the search bar and type system restore. Select create a restore point. Now select your C drive and click create. Name your restore point to something you will recall for later. Click on create. All apps or drivers discussed will be found in the video description. Note, going forward, please proceed at your own risk. Thank you. Latency monitor. We're going to download latency monitor. Go to your web browser and search latency monitor. It should be the first or second link with resplendence.com. Go to the download section and find the latest latency monitor app. It will be listed as latency mon. Download the app. Install the app and then run latency mon. Make sure no apps are running. Click on the run button and run it for 30 to 60 seconds. Most systems have an average of 100 to 200 microseconds. The lower the number, the better. Ideally, you want to get this number as low as possible. For example, on my system, it's a little high because I'm recording from another PC. Typically, I get anywhere from 15 to 30 microseconds. After 30 to 60 seconds have passed, stop the session and write down the numbers. For a preview of what's yet to come, I'll be diving into several parts such as power plans, notification settings, boot command changes, and more. Bookmark this timestamp. If you need to review settings or reapply them, if you ever needed to wipe your system, perform a driver update or update to a new version of Windows 10. For advanced troubleshooting, you can use the drivers tab to help identify possible causes of high latency. We'll come back to this later. Quick CPU. Go back to Google and search for Quick CPU. Download the latest version, install it and run it. In a plugged in power state, Make sure your system power plan is set to ultimate performance or high performance for Intel and AMD Zen 1 Plus or older AMD based CPUs. For AMD Zen 2 or Ryzen 3000 series, it is recommended to use the AMD Ryzen High Performance Power Plan. This power plan is available from AMD's chipset driver. The AMD chipset with the Ryzen Power Profile link is in the video description. It's also recommended to use the latest Intel chipset driver for your motherboard. Please refer to your motherboard or OEM manufacturer for the latest version. Set core parking, frequency scaling, and turbo index to maximum and apply the settings. Various control panel settings. Hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. This feature was added to Windows 10 2004 or Windows 10 20 H1. Some systems have seen a slight performance increase Note, recent NVIDIA 451.x drivers have contributed to blue screen scenarios in games such as Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, and Warzone. If this happens on your PC, you can simply undo the change. To enable the change, go to Start, Settings, System. Go to Display. Go to Graphics Settings. Turn on Hardware Accelerated GPU Scheduling. While we're here, in Graphics Performance Preference, you can optionally set Windows Explorer to always use a high performance profile versus letting Windows choose. Performance gains may be minimal at best. However, if you are using a laptop, it's not recommended to make these changes. Under Desktop App, hit Browse. Go to your C drive and Windows directory, then choose Explorer. Go to the Options button, select High Performance, and save the changes. Go back and go to Notification and Actions. Turn off notifications from these senders. Uncheck all focus assist settings. Turn off notifications from apps and other senders. Go back and type startup apps. This section will list anything that's running on startup. If you know the apps you use and don't want them to run on startup, turn them off. Now some apps may be necessary such as GoXLR, Realtek, or sound related apps that use your drivers. Additional apps on startup can increase latency and decrease performance. Use these settings at your own discretion. Next, we'll turn off background apps. 
Type in background apps and select it. Turn off the option, let apps run in the background. If you're using a desktop and want to squeeze more performance out of your system, consider turning off C-States, EIST, and speed step related settings on your motherboard. Although this will increase power usage, it will turn off power saving features for your CPU. Please refer to your motherboard manual on how to make these changes. Now, we're going to run PowerShell as administrator for the next section. BCD Edit. Turning off High Precision Event Timers or HEPT can improve performance. I'll put the command lines and undo command lines in the video description. Simply copy and paste the command lines and hit enter. Settings will take effect on reboot. Make sure you to check your motherboard settings. If HEPT is present, test the settings first. You can also disable HEPT and you might see a performance gain. In the event no performance gain took place, simply run the undo commands to go back to the Windows default. Go back into PowerShell admin again, and we're gonna launch File System Utility. If you have a solid state drive or NVMe drive, Windows should already have a feature called Trim Enabled. If Trim is disabled, SSD performance will degrade over time. To confirm Trim is enabled, run this command. fsutil space behavior space query space disable delete notify and hit enter. Both NTFS and REFS lines should read zero. If Windows displays one, Windows did not detect a SSD or NVMe drive. If you know for sure a SSD or NVMe drive is installed, check with the drive manufacturer or motherboard OEM manufacturer and install the drivers. Come back to this point of the video and Windows should report zero. Now to force this value to zero, run the command line fsutil space behavior space set space disable delete notify space zero and hit enter if you're running windows 10 enterprise windows 10 pro for workstations windows 10 server 2016 or later resilient file system or refs should also be changed enter the following command line fsutil space behavior space set space disable delete notify space refs space zero and hit enter but what if i have a mix of ssd and hard drives the value should be zero if one or more ssd or nvme drives are connected to your system mft zone next we're going to adjust the mft zone according to microsoft's documentation they state the MFT zone is a reserved area that enables the master file table MFT to expand as needed to prevent MFT fragmentation. If the average file size on the volume, in this case your drive, is 2 kilobytes or less, it can be beneficial to set the MFT zone value to 2. If the average size on the volume is 1 kilobyte or less, it can be beneficial to set the MFT zone value to 4. I've noticed slightly more improvement with MFT zone set to 2. Windows defaults to 0, which is also the same as 1. To change the MFT zone to 2, enter the command line fsutil space behavior space set space MFT zone space 2 and hit enter. Now if you need to go back to the default, simply replace the 2 with a 1. Last access. The last access parameter in Windows timestamps every time a file was used. This can wear on your solid state drive over time. You may see a slight performance gain from this change. Note that running this command could impact features like remote storage that depend on this functionality. According to Microsoft, the disable last access parameter reduces the impact of logging updates to the last access timestamp on files and directories. Disabling the last access time feature improves the speed of file and directory access. To make a change, enter the command line. fsutil space behavior space set space disable last access space 1 and hit enter. If you want to undo this command, replace the 1 with a 2. Now the response may look confusing. User managed enabled means that you set the command line and enabled the disable last access feature. Next, we'll increase the memory usage in your system. You may ask, why would I want to do this? Well, if you have 
40% of your memory used, that means 60% of it is free. If your apps or games aren't using the available memory but could take advantage, making this change could increase performance. If you have less than 16 gigabytes of memory or RAM, I don't recommend running this command line. Before making this change, Microsoft state, setting memory usage to two raises the limit of paged pool memory. This might improve performance if your system is opening and closing many files in the same file set and is not already using large amounts of system memory for other applications or for cache memory. If your computer is already using large amounts of system memory for other applications or for cache memory, increasing the limit of NTFS page and non-page pool memory reduces the available pool memory for other processes. This might reduce overall system performance. Let's run the command line to increase memory usage. Type in fsutil space behavior space set space memory usage space 2 and hit enter. To undo the command, replace the 2 with the 1. Memory compression. Memory compression is enabled by default. This uses CPU cycles and can impact performance. Memory compression can be disabled, but it is recommended for systems with 16 gigabytes or more memory or RAM, whatever you want to call it. Note this feature is only available in recent versions of Windows 10. To disable memory compression, enter the command line disable dash mm agent space dash mc. Hit enter. If you wish to undo the command, simply enter enable dash mm agent space dash mc and hit enter. Page combining. Page combining can increase CPU utilization and by default, it's disabled, but to make sure, run the command line get dash mm agent. If you see page combining is set to true, you can turn it off. Type in disable dash mm agent space dash page combining and hit enter. If you wish to re-enable, simply enter enable dash mm agent space dash page combining and hit enter. MSI utility version three. Sometimes micro centering can be resolved by enabling message signaled interrupts or MSI. This is more with GPU manufacturers like Nvidia not fully taking advantage of MSI. Sometimes this has to do with compatibility reasons. How do you enable MSI mode for your GPU? Besides modifying the Windows registry, you can download an app called MSI Utility. From your web browser, go to Google and search MSI mode space guru 3D and hit enter. It should be the first link with a subject line, Windows, line-based versus message signal-based interrupts. Click on the link. You can read the technical details of what it does and what it is if you wish. But to download the MSI Utility version 3 app, simply scroll down from the post, click it, download it, save it, extract it, and run the app as administrator. With this version, you'll need to make the app full screen by maximizing the window. Simply select your GPU, put a check mark in MSI. You can optionally set the interrupt priority to high or leave it as default, which is undefined. Changing the value to high can increase system responsiveness. Click on apply, then reboot your system. Are you seeing improvements? Let me know in the comments. Returning to latency monitor, run latency mon for 30 to 60 seconds. Now there are a few apps I'm aware of that can cause increased system latency utilization. For example, GoXLR app, voice meter, banana and potato, antivirus apps like Norton or McAfee. Cloning monitors can increase utilization as well as the NVIDIA driver. Close the sound apps and reload launch latency monitor to confirm nothing else is causing the problems. Now, if antivirus apps are causing increased latency, check with these companies to see if there's a way to improve app utilization. If you notice latency spikes every few seconds with the NVIDIA driver, you can look at the driver's tab to see the spikes. There would be an unusual pattern with system utilization with the driver name nvldmkm.sys. If this happens, you can look into interrupt affinity policy tool and assign another core to this driver. Normally, CPU zero is used by NVIDIA, and that could be the problem. Interrupt affinity policy tool. Go to the link in the video description, scroll down to interrupt affinity policy tool and click the link. Install the app and run it as administrator. Find your GPU, select it, and go to the set mask option. This part will require a little bit of an explanation. Here you'll have a list of your physical CPU cores and your hyperthreading or SMT cores. If you have hyperthreading or SMT enabled, 
you'll have one physical core followed by one hyper-threading or SMT virtual core. For example, an 8-core 10700K processor with hyper-threading enabled would have 8 cores and 8 hyper-thread cores. The first core is CPU 0 and the hyper-threading core to that is CPU 1. Next physical core is CPU 2 and the hyper-threading core to that is CPU 3. This pattern continues for all 8 cores and 8 hyper-threading cores. If you have an AMD Ryzen 3000 series or Zen 2 processor, your physical cores are first, followed by the SMT cores. For example, if you have a 3900X, CPU 0 to 11 is physical, and CPU 12 to 13 are SMT. Of course, if you have hyper-threading or SMT off, no virtual cores are listed. It's important you select a physical core that's not in use. You may need to experiment with this to find a free core. Since most apps or drivers use the first physical core, CPU 0, it's recommended to choose another free physical core. Every CPU is made different, with a different set of good cores and okay cores. In other words, not all cores are created equally. Because of that, every CPU is different. My Ryzen 3900X performs best on CPU 3, but yours may be different. For my two 10700Ks, one of them performs best on the 7th physical core and the other on the 8th physical core. No idea why, it just is. So you gotta keep trying different cores until you settle on the best performing CPU core for your GPU on your PC. When you select the CPU number you want, hit OK and go to Done. Then you'll need to reboot to test the settings. On a closing note, if you have games like Valorant, COD, or Fortnite, Test out NVIDIA Reflex to see if you're getting better GPU response times. Of course, this is with NVIDIA. You can also use the on plus boost in game to ensure your CPU, excuse me, your GPU is running at max power. This may also improve system responsiveness and lower micro stuttering. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Now, as of this recording, I try to stream games daily on YouTube during the week from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. PST and during the weekend from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. PST. Ask questions, and if I know the answer, I'll let you know. Now, if you want to see more content like this or want to catch my streams, hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications. Also, if you want to support the channel, hit the join button. It will help me get more hardware to test and provide better quality content. Thanks for watching, and appreciate each and every one of you. I'll catch you next time, and take care.